Wow, it's just doing magic already. Are you kidding? Love a bit of talent in a bottle. Hello there, my name is Byron. Welcome to the Artist Opus YouTube channel. A quick intro here, there's gonna be a lot more information in the outro, so stick around if you wanna find out more about the product I'm using, where to get it, etc. The product in question is Dirty Downs Rust. This is phenomenal. This is just talent in a bottle. Normally, Rust takes you know loads of steps, loads of effort. That's one step, effectively, and looks incredible. That's it, really. Um, this is the result of a suggestion from a viewer. Uh, they're gonna win a competition, so give us some more suggestions for what you'd like to see us covering in future tutorials. These guys do a moss and a verdigris. I'm particularly interested in the verdigris. Maybe you'd like to see me test those out. Maybe you'd like to see me do some more work on this piece. I don't know. Let me know below. Anyway, let's jump straight into my pretty much unedited one take first impressions of this product. We're gonna speed through me putting texture paint down beforehand. We all know how texture paint works. Um, it's not particularly important. The important thing is how this behaves. So uh, let's go. All right. This is gonna be super quick. I have 20 minutes to try out Dirty Downs Rust. So this is the product that we're talking about. It's meant to be magic. I'm always up for a bit of talent in a bottle. So if we've got a new streaking grime equivalent, that would be amazing. What I've got here is some terrain that I stippled before. This is one that I was trying some OSL on. And I'm just gonna take a existing section that has been done. Uh, this has been done with stippling and then we've just dry brushed it with silver and then we've actually dry brushed it with a tiny bit of black at the very end. You can see the step where it's kind of dulled things down, makes them look pretty realistic. We're just going to give it a go on there. So one tip I've been given is to put a little bit of texture paint down beforehand. So we're going to start off putting some texture paint down uh, because that's going to add to kind of the, the chunkiness of the rust. I want it to look really rusty and uh, hopefully that works nicely. So you can see I've thinned it a bit too much probably here. Maybe I shouldn't have, um, yeah, I've basically made it into a low quality paint, which isn't ideal. So at this point, I've still got the ability to take it off the raised areas, which I'm gonna do. <laughs> Obviously at this point, a microfiber would be a bit better. <sighs> Let's see if I can grab something. Trusty J cloth. <laughs> this is <laughs> the result of a magenta incident that some of our older viewers might remember. This is perfect though. I expect to be doing similar with the, uh, the Dirty Down product. So we might end up repeating this step. Instructions. Brush airbrush to plastic, paintwork. Hot and the surface must be warm to the touch. Well, that's literally been hair dried, so very warm to the touch. Da 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 da. Apply thin coats, darker shade, thick coats, thick coats, obviously. Ooh, weird. Do we just go in neat? Let's find out. So, what I'm going to do is pop down some blobs and spread them around. I'm not quite sure of, you know, exactly the thickness we should be going for. And I don't know whether I want to remove it from the raised areas. I probably do, at least a bit. Feels a bit too heavy handed. This is weird. I can put in gravy on my model. Already drying. So obviously our warm surface is gonna be affecting that from the hair drying. I did say it was meant to go on a warm surface though, so I guess it's okay. All right, because it's drying so fast, quickly jump to our cloth. If you can remove it once it's fully dried, so let's go in here. This is a first experimental use. That's working really well. This is already feeling like the removal is an important step, just visually at this stage. 
try and make a corner with my cloth. Wow, it's just doing magic already. Are you kidding? Oh, love a bit of talent in a bottle. Remove some of these fibers, just in case they end up becoming permanent fixtures. This is looking amazing, are you kidding? Wow. That is insane. That is one of the best ma magic products I have ever used. That is my discovery of the year. I knew this stuff would be good, but my God, that is insane, look at it. Especially with the, the dry brushing we did beforehand. Obviously it looked exactly like this, now it looks like that. And there's some more to go as it dries properly, I guess. Unsurprisingly, the areas that had the thickest texture paint in, they're also, uh, you know, that spongy and they've collected um, the dirty down in the same way. But my God, that looks incredible. So good. All right, well, let's leave that to fully dry and then come back for end results. My God, it's <laughs> just so good. Wow. Absolute win, my God. Okay, so we've seen the product is incredible. Absolutely brilliant, super fun to use, really organic, um, not too smelly, that's kind of nice. You know, a lot of these come with a, a, a real chemical whiff to them and you're worrying about it while you're going, but this is just great. Absolutely loved every single step of that. So a couple of things to cover. If you're using texture paint, I could have gone and should have gone way heavier with it, way thicker, diluted it less, and then just wiped off the excess, you know, aim for the recesses and then wipe it off the raised areas or the middle of flat panels, stuff like that, it collect more in the recesses or where water would pull or run down, etc. It's not fully controllable, so what you're gonna get is random. Be aware of that as you're going. You can coax it more into certain sections. I'll be playing more with using it thick, using it thin, um, you know, that type of stuff, maybe diluting it. I'll play around more before I get into a comprehensive, slightly more experienced tutorial. This was unedited first impressions. They still went pretty well though, right? This video is not quite the result of a viewer suggestion, but is kind of. So this is my research before I do a Rust Three Ways video. This will be one of the ways I needed to see how it works first. That was a suggestion from SoCar4. Comment somewhere on the screen now. Uh, get in touch, dude, via any of our social media, send us a DM and we will get you out a set of your choosing and a texture palette of your choosing. So let us know which one of those you would like. For the rest of you, please like, please comment, please subscribe and give us a suggestion down below for what you'd like to see us cover next on the channel. Could be a follow on to this, could be something completely random. That's it. I really love this product, 10 out of 10. Um, if you are in the UK, Element's got it in stock. If you're in Europe, Element ships all over the world anyway. And if you're in America, goblinshut.com is the distributor. So people always ask where to get this stuff from. It's widely accessible. It's not some weird product you're gonna have to scour eBay for. I think that's it. Any questions or suggestions or discoveries you've had using it or how you found it, please pop them below. It's always really useful to get more informed opinions than me on this stuff because I've only used it once. That was the first time I've used it. We just saw it. Um, not practiced at all before then. So before I do the next video where I try and do things comprehensively, you know, rust with 30 down, rust my classic way and then maybe rust with pigments or something like that, it'd be really good to get some more information from you guys if you've used it a load. So please do pop your experiences down below. That's it. Thank you very much for tuning in and we will catch you in the next video. Make sure you uh, hit that bell notification to be notified for future content. We've got quite a lot of exciting stuff coming up very soon.